John says, I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. Um, so the young men in these verses, they represent the spiritual teenagers or younger Christians. Uh, for spiritual teenagers, the Christian life is not just about enjoying the forgiveness of God and enjoying fellowship. It's also about fighting the enemy. It is about fighting against sin and temptations. Uh, so this phase is mostly known for spiritual conflict. Uh, there's like this battle, you know. You go into everyday life, it's like, oh, God is telling me this, but my temptation is pulling me another way. So something of that nature. And at this stage, as a spiritual teenager, you know, you need help. Like any teenager, they need help, although they don't think they do. <laughs> um, they need to be taken by the hand, and they need to be taught the Word of God. Um, but more than that, they need to be taught to rely on the Word of God and not their feelings. Um, unlike when people were spiritual babies, you know, for people uh, who are a little bit more than spiritual babies, God. Well, it, it won't feel like God is always there. But um, spiritual young men, spiritual people who have grown a little bit, will become strong because of the, the Bible, because of the Word of God. And they shouldn't have to rely totally on their feelings. And since the Word of God is in them, you know, they desire to live according to God's commands. Uh, so, I mean, so you can get the picture, right? It's someone who's growing, developing, and wanting to, wanting to live out the Word of God because that desire is there. Uh, but the way to grow out of this phase to a more mature phase is that they should learn how to feed themselves the Word of God. Again, at this phase, it will not feel like God is always with them. But at this point, God would want them to depend on God and the Word of God instead of how they feel, you know, what they feel about God. So I'm going to switch to the third stage. Verses 13 and 14, that I'm talking about fathers, adult Christians, more mature Christians. It says, I am writing to you fathers because you know Him who is from the beginning. So in a way, this is a more advanced stage. It, and, and as you can see, it says that they know God from the beginning. Um, I just want to say why all, you know, all Christians, we know God, young or old, you know, we do know God. But it says that for the, the more mature ones know God from the beginning. And in a sense, that means that their walk with God is anchored strongly by many years of experience with God. And their knowledge of God comes from a very grounded foundation. So the faith that they have is steadfast. Um, so people who are not on this stage, like uh, spiritual babies or teenagers, um, you know, when they get in trouble, you know, that's the time they go to God. You know, in times of crisis, like, yeah, let's, let's go to God. Um, so that would mean, you know, the timing of spending time with God kind of varies, you know, it ebbs and flows depending on whether there's a crisis or not. Uh, but for a more mature believer, uh, they go to God and depend on God, not only in times of crisis, but also during normal times. Um, they spend much time being with God and in a sense cultivating this relationship uh, with God because it is, it is a relationship that you cultivate and and try, to, uh, and try to be good with, with God. Uh, so, so those are the three stages that a lot of these uh, you know, great theologians are describing. Um, so to keep it simple, you know, stage one, spiritual babies, you know, it's about reassurance you know, that God loves you, God forgives you. Uh, stage two, the spiritual teenager, it's about you know, becoming strong spiritually becoming more and more dependent on God instead of how you feel, 
In stage three, the more mature Christian, is, it's about knowing God deeply, you know, drinking in that, in that well. Um, not just in times of crisis, but throughout the years, you know, cultivating this, this good, passionate relationship with God. Um, one more interesting point that I have learned, you know, with, with regards to the stages. Uh, if you're talking about physical growth, uh, the growth of a biological baby, you know, the, the goal of a baby growing into a child and a teenager into a, an adult, uh, you know, your goal is to make the person independent, right? You know, when, when, a, when a person starts as a baby, he's very dependent. Uh, you got to feed him, you got to change him, and then he becomes children, and then it's a different kind of need. Uh, teenagers have different needs, and then... And then Hopefully, you know, you'd want the person as an adult to, to, to be independent individually. Uh, in a sense, that's the biological goal uh, of uh, human beings. Uh, the strange thing is, for spiritual growth, it's, it's sort of backwards. Uh, what we find is that the more mature Christian is, is not the one who's totally overcome sin or doubt and is able to take care of themselves the more mature Christian has actually come to realize, uh, they say, that the older they are spiritually, the more dependent they are of God. Instead of depending on God in just a time of need, they actually depend on God moment by moment. Um, I mean, that's what a lot of people told me. As, as they become more and more mature, they realize more and more how they depend and need God and rely on God for everything. So, so, I, so I thought that was interesting, you know, it's sort of reverse. Um, but the end of it all, you know, it's spiritual maturity. Uh, that means it's about growing uh, in the image of Christ. So, so in a sense, so that's the lay of the land, you know, that's, that's where we're going in our spiritual journey. And, and the goal is to grow, as this, the scripture says, in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Um, but if you're me, you're like, huh, what does, what does that look like? <laughs> the, the fullness of the stature of, uh, of Christ. Uh, Pastor Tim Keller has a, an interesting description of what the mature qualities that may look like uh, in Jesus. Of course, he based it on the Bible. So I'm just gonna share it. Uh, he says that, you know, the maturity of Jesus, that what, she show, what Jesus shows in the Bible, in a way, it's a combination of virtues and character. Uh, he says that Jesus, Jesus shows tenderness, but somehow he is not weak. Uh, Jesus shows strength, but he is also not harsh. Uh, Jesus is humble, and yet he also has self-confidence. And Jesus is holy, but he is also approachable. Uh, Jesus is powerful, but at the same time, he is not insensitive. So, you know, it's an interesting way to describe the fullness of maturity and stature of Christ. I mean, at least that's, that's what I think, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, so again, you know, this, this sort of, I sort of wanted to give you where people go in, te in terms of spiritual journey. Uh, and as I said a few weeks before, it's possible that people can get stuck in certain places unless, you know, unless we cooperate with God and let the Spirit change us from the inside out. And it's not so much about stuff we do, but it's more about letting ourselves, you know, letting God, um, having the Spirit help us become more mature. Um, in other words, it's about letting ourselves um, grow up. Uh, the Bible, in a sense, never says that we'll, we will live a comfortable life. I mean, it doesn't say that. Instead, the Bible does say that we do need to grow up, in a sense, you know, because God desires us to grow uh, into Christ's image. And uh, the, this process of growing up, and that's something that we're going to be more, you know, talking about more starting next week uh, as we start covering discipleship. Uh, so I hope that just knowing the stages, you know, encourages us or motivates us to grow because we can see things from an overview, you know, from this bigger perspective. Um, I do think from our, in our church, in reality, all of us are in many different places. Uh, 
uh, in a spiritual sense, you know, some are babies, some are in between babies and teenagers, some are teenagers or adults, mature Christians, and, and many others in between. You know, there isn't really a hard and fast line uh, into the three categories. Um, but the stages in 1 John, I think it's good to describe because they tell us what's in common uh, with people in these different stages. Um, my hope also is that uh, we don't use these stages to discourage people or criticize people. Um, I don't want someone to, who thinks that he or she is mature. I don't want them to criticize the immaturity of those who are younger in the faith. Um, likewise, I don't want someone younger in the faith criticize older ones in the faith because they're boring and their faith looks dead. You know, <laughs> sometimes you hear, sometimes you may hear arguments like that. You know, so it's not. Stages are not a place to criticize one another about your stage. Um, instead, what we could do is to use the stages to build each other up. Um, more mature Christians can experience a sense of revival and excitement fr from the younger Christians. Both older and younger Christians can be reminded of the joy of becoming a believer from spiritual babies who recently put their faith in Christ. And people younger in the faith can benefit from the spiritual wisdom from spiritually mature Christians. Um, all in all, it's much better to strive to build each other up uh, in every way, you know, especially, especially in church. Um, going back to our retreat last week, I think uh, for the people who went, I think uh, you guys may have enjoyed the Saturday morning session. Uh, that's the part where you're all in a small